Some years back I was kind of interested in longboards and although riding them was never really my forte, I did have bad dreams about building one and that's where this mistake originates from. At the time I of course didn't realize that this board would be way too thick, way too heavy and just totally unwieldy to use. So you know I kind of enjoyed doing it and I built some for friends and um, unfortunately they got these unwieldy ones and then later on I invested in some tools and proper materials and I built this board which is uh, kind of nice, it's much thinner and I also built this small penny sized board which is also pretty nice except for the trucks and the wheels which are terrible. And then I suddenly found out about the rep rep movement and I lost interest in the skateboards and I built a 3D printer out of MDF. <laughs> Anyways, long story short, I wanted to revisit my wet dreams so I packed my stuff and went to visit my father in Spain. Well, you know, driving from Germany to Spain is kind of a big distance and uh, I'm kind of a pussy myself, so um, he decided to spend some nice days in France and uh, we drove back together in, uh, in the car. So this is me in my dad's workshop and I'm looking for a nice piece of lumber. I chose this piece of ash and I already knew the required dimensions because I already 3D modeled the board in Fusion 360, including the three-dimensional shape, which will come in really handy later on. With the dimensions of the future skateboard in mind, and with the help of my father, I took the slab of wood down to two millimeter thick sawn veneers. If you are playing along at home, you might have noticed two odd things. First of all, skateboards usually aren't made out of sawn veneers, but out of peeled veneers. I'm aware of that, but the only real reason to use peeled veneers is because they are much less wasteful and therefore much cheaper. Sawn veneer, on the other hand, which is the veneer that I'm using, is much stronger because it has the grain pattern that is perpendicular to the face of the veneer. Now, the second thing that you might have noticed is that I'm using ash and not Canadian maple, which is the wood that's usually being used for skateboards. Ash, so the wood that I'm using is admittedly an odd choice, but it's super strong and my father has plenty of it in his workshop, so that's what I'm going to use. Before I sent the boards down to their final thickness, I first glued them together to make one big sheet of lengthwise oriented veneer and another one with a grain oriented widthwise. That will make sure that I have a cross grain pattern once the board is finished and I won't have any issues with the board splitting lengthwise. Ah. Now that the veneers were sanded down to their final thickness, I decided to prepare the mold. Now it is very common to use a one-sided mold and then pressurize it with the kind help of our atmosphere, which I've already shared on my Instagram before. And using a vacuum system like that is indeed an easy option, but you're pretty much SOL if you have a leak somewhere and you can't find exactly where. Since I had all the tools I could have ever dreamed of right at my disposal, I decided to take more of a pants-on approach. So remember me saying that the three-dimensional shape which I had modeled before would come in handy? Well, I used that shape to create a perfect negative which I could then carve out of MDF.
ja? Prachtig. At that point, I asked a friend of mine, who is an amazing artist, if she would like to draw something to engrave on the back of the board. And within the same day, she sent me this cute girl trying to act tough with her bomber jacket. And needless to say, I absolutely love it. And if you do too, make sure to check her out on Instagram, where you can find her at lolo.illustration. And please make sure to also leave a nice comment on her page while you're at it, because I kind of pressured her into coming up with something so quickly since I only had a few days left in Spain. Yes, I'm pretty excited. Me too. Now I have everything set up for the molding process and it's going to be one big sandwich out of different materials. So um, I'll go through them one by one. Yeah, right. I think it's better to let future me take the lead from here. So first there's the bottom of the mold followed by a piece of carpet to both protect the surface of the skateboard and to distribute the clamping force evenly. On top of that, three of the two millimeter thick veneers are placed in a cross grain pattern as I've explained before. Between two of these three layers I'll also add one layer of carbon fiber which will just add a little bit more strength because the skateboard is just going to be around 6 mm thick which is pretty thin. I actually did some simulations in Fusion 360 to find out whether I'd have to add the carbon fiber or not and yes I definitely do. Here you can see the approximate displacement with and without two layers of 200 gram per square meter biaxial carbon fiber under my weight but I later decided that one layer should be enough. But anyways, after all of that, I also added a pretty heavy duty structure to help distribute the pressure more evenly. One thing I want to mention, because I know it's going to be asked by someone in the comments, is why I cut the veneers like this. And the reason for that is that I have a compound curve in the mold. Um, you can see it a little bit better in the top mold. In this area and in this area, it curves both in this axis and in this axis. And wood doesn't really like to be bent in that way. To relieve some pressure on the wood, I decided to cut off the corners like this, and that way there won't be any problems. At this point, unfortunately, I had to go back to Germany. The drive back home was pretty uneventful. However, after two long days of riding, my bike decided to dip its toes in a small creek without considering that that would flood the carburetors. Yes. But I got a nice Instagram post out of it, which was nice. Really nice. And I still made it back home, which is always a plus. And, um, now, let's get back to the project at hand.
end up using these M5 bolts, but first I'll pre-drill for M3 bolts. M3 bolts. Now I just have to make sure that everything is lined up and then I can drill this one for a 5mm bolt. Once I've done that I can fix this hole in place and do the other ones. Now I'll take care of the grip area of the board. I'll be using a mineral called corundum for that and it's um, aluminum oxide. It's usually used for sandblasting and that's how I got this stuff. And I'll use this salt shaker as an applicator. To fix the corundum in place I'll use this epoxy system from HP Textiles. If you want to clean up the edges, it's important that you do it while it's still wet because once this dries, it becomes rock solid. While the board is curing behind me, I'll give these trucks some attention. I think I'll just have to sand them down and give them a new lick of paint. Unfortunately, I only have paint that's supposed to go on uh, you know, hot surfaces like brake calipers and uh, stuff like that. Um, but I think this will work. I've tried it before and the paint cures pretty hard um, even when you don't cook it to like 400, 500 degrees Celsius. And if the paint doesn't end up being as resilient as I thought it would be, then I can just strip it again and repaint it with some proper paint. the next day and this top coat already looks beautiful and also feels perfect. The grip is perfect. You can already barely see the sand but of course I'm not finished yet. I do still have to varnish the back of the board and also I want to add some varnish on the top again because that will uh, conceal the grip even more.
können uns hier hinsetzen. Irgendwo runter? Vielleicht da. Schau mal. Feil. Ist doch scheißegal. Alright, conclusion time. This board is definitely the most beautiful one I've made so far, although it does have one fatal flaw. The thing is that the board is just too flexible for its own good. That means that for everyone who's heavier than me, the ride will be super swingy and you'll have a hard time controlling the board, um, which is obviously not something you want. For me it's great, but for anyone heavier than me, it's a bit on the thin side, let's call it that way. During filming I also met these guys doing slides on their boards, so I had to ask them whether they would be able to do something similar on my board. And Paddy took on the challenge and his slides were quite impressive, especially considering that this board is absolutely not made for that. Kein Problem, dafür ist es da. Aber geil, schönes Graffiti. Skate or Die, mein erstes äh, Computerspiel. <lacht> also, hast du irgendeinen Instagram-Account, den du pluggen möchtest? Ja, gerne. Ja? Äh, Patmandu oder Pat Patipatson, ich weiß gerade gar nicht. Patipatson. Oder Patmandu, ja. Okay, warte. So wie Katmandu. Ja, ich, ich glaube, es war Patipatson. This video was definitely a lot of fun, but also a lot of work. So obviously that's one of the reasons why I don't upload very often is because I just want to make, you know, videos that are a bit heavier in content. Maybe I'll mix it up in the future by making some lighter videos. Um, I've definitely had some awesome projects which were just not as big as I usually want them to be. So I didn't film them, which um, in hindsight is kind of a pity. I should have I should have filmed them. But anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe because as you know, by now I don't upload often. And if I do, you maybe don't want to miss it. And uh, also make sure to check out Lolo's um, Instagram channel. Uh, she's the one who made the art on the back of the board, which just looks so awesome. I love it. And um, yeah, that's it for me. Goodbye and see you next time.